Blog Talk Radio. I say unto you, all things whatsoever ye pray and ask for, believe that ye have received them, and ye shall receive them. Greetings, this is your host, Tyler Hemp with Hemp Aware Radio and HempAware.com, where you can discover valuable resources about hemp and what it can do for you, your family, and community as a renewable, sustainable, and economically sound resource for food, shelter, clothing, and 25,000 things. You can find a copy of each episode on the iTunes podcast library, as well as blogtalkradio.com forward slash hemp aware. And share these with your friends, with your family. Help spread the good news about cannabis hemp and be the change that you want to see in the world. On this episode, you're going to meet a hemp musician, longtime activist, and hemp entrepreneur, Jimmy Limo, coming straight from Weed, California. Jimmy has been a professional guitarist, a vocalist, and been involved with the music scene for over 20 years. He's owned companies in Hawaii, played in blues bands, rock bands, and uh, classic rock bands, rock bands. And uh, he's been many different places around the world playing music. He's a heart-centered, very sweet, smart guy doing some really fabulous things to make this world a more harmonious place to live. And today's show is all about activating the imagination, focusing on your dreams, and allowing them to come to fruition. And Jimmy uh, just recently acquired 40 acres of land in Northern California in a beautiful little town called Weed, California. And, uh, you know, his vision is really to, to develop it as a solar wind-powered amphitheater. He wants to de- develop an amazing, sustainable, eco-friendly uh, music amphitheater constructed out of hemp building materials, whether it's hemp adobe, hemp crete, or something better. He's got a fabulous vision to improve and uplift the town of weed and ultimately the entire world as a result of it. So it's an honor, a privilege, and I'm so excited to have you on the show today, Jimmy. Thank you for joining us. Oh, shucks. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. Um, I really appreciate all the stuff you're doing and trying to raise uh, people's awareness of hemp and uh, uh, all the good that it can bring. Uh, I love this little town of... Uh, with the best name in the world, Weed, California. You, uh, you can't go wrong with a name like that, although people in the in the city don't want to be associated with it for some reason. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of a leftover reefer madness hangover. They're looking at it, the whole thing <laughs> for madness goggles. And uh, right. a lot of them don't realize they've got the best name in the world. Everything in this world is about branding, Tyler. Uh, you know, when you've got a product, you've got a message, you got to get your brand recognized, and with a name like Weed California, uh, it's they're they're sitting in the catbird seat. They you know it's, they've got a goose that's laying a golden egg, and they don't know what to do with it. So, my it seems like my job is to kind of make them aware, like hemp aware, and uh, of the good things that you can bring with uh, industrial hemp, with cannabis, medical cannabis, and uh, of course with live music and culture. That's what I'm hoping to do with the uh, the 40 acres in the amphitheater. Awesome. Well, I really look forward to discussing more of that with you. When we first opened this show, I, I, I read a quote from a pretty uh, prestigious, long-term, uh, ancient biblical text from the from the Bible. And I say unto you, all things whatsoever ye pray and ask for, believe that ye shall receive, and it shall be given unto you. And it seems like you had a vision, you had a dream to get property and weed, and now that dream has, has come to fruition, but now it's about stepping up to the next level, aligning with the right people, getting the resources, getting the vision, getting the plan together so that we can build this amazing hemp amphitheater and start doing wonderful educational um, musical shows and all kinds of wonderful ideas. Um, the first question I have for you is, you know, you've been involved in the cannabis movement for many years now, and you've helped spread the awareness through your events, your music. You have a hemp song, a uh, cannabis song, and, you know, also through your writing, you've been showing up to city council meetings and letting, uh, you know, everyone know about what's going on, and nothing stops you. Why is it that you're so passionate about cannabis hemp or cannabis sativa 
you know, as a medicine and an industrial crop? Well, Power, it's it's been um, 45 years since Woodstock, and I I would think that we'd have gotten past this by now. <laughs> you know, 45 years have gone by, and there's still the same forces in the, our economy and in government that are still trying to to make it the devil's weed, trying to uh, demonize this gift that we've been given in the cannabis plant. And uh, like you mentioned, it's not only, you know, for medical purposes and the hundreds of uh, different maladies that is been shown to uh, to really help in a non-toxic, non-addicting way, but it's it's all the other things you can do with it. Uh, you can build shelter. You can use it for hempcrete or hemp adobe. Uh, it's a, a better insulator than fiberglass insulation. You can make fiberboard. Uh, you can make uh, non-toxic uh, paints and resins. Uh, of course, it was, it's kind of ironic that you quoted uh, the Bible uh, there because the King James Bible was printed on hemp paper. Uh, Christopher Columbus sailed to America and discovered America in boats with uh, hemp sails and hemp rope. Uh, for clothing, it's more durable than cotton. It uses uh, half the water that cotton uses. Uh, it, it doesn't. Cotton is responsible for 25% of the pesticide use in the world, and you don't need pesticides with uh, cannabis. Uh, the original Levi's were made from hemp. Uh, the list is endless. Paper, cardboard. Um, you can get four times the amount of paper uh, from an acre of hemp than you can from an acre of uh, trees. So all these uh, pristine forests are being cut down for paper, uh, which is one of the major one of the major reasons that uh, cannabis was illegalized in the first place. You know, it was uh, uh, William Randolph Hearst and his newspaper empire uh, needed uh, uh, paper, and so he bought up huge tracts of forest. Well, he he felt that uh, hemp was a competitor, and so uh, they came up with this story that oh, it's this hemp and marijuana are, are being brought in from Mexico by migrants, and uh, they're going to be after your women and children, and it's poison, it's the devil's weed, it'll make you crazy and kill people, and they use this type of uh, propaganda through our government officials who are neatly paid off, and it's gone on for over 50 years, and it's a uh, it's, you know it's high time. Pardon the pun, that um, we finally used some science, scientific fact and reasoning, and um, and and legitimized it. It's going to be a great cash crop uh, for farmers in America for, for industrial hemp. Uh, and uh, let's get on with it. We live in a town called Weed. We stand to profit and get uh, employment and tax revenue and, and tourism from this. So uh, the fact that our our city fathers uh, can't see that is uh, it's just it's crazy. Well, I can understand your passion, you know, and I share that same passion. Once I saw the potential, you know, the economic potential, the environmental protect, you know, protection or or preservation, um, you know, at the age of 17, I knew why I was on this planet, and I'm I'm now 30, you know, today, and I haven't stopped since, and that's how you know I've been able to meet amazing people like yourself and. I actually was just honored um, the privilege of seeing your beautiful piece of property in weed, which, you know, I know you have very high intentions um, and dreams for it, but please, you know, share with us in a nutshell what you intend uh, other than the amphitheater for this property to, to be used for. Well, the, originally my search for this property didn't include an amphitheater. I was looking for a, a piece of property, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in the in the weed area for uh, to put up a demonstration uh, proof of concept wind farm. Uh, the whole reason that the town of Weed exists is because back in 1901, Abner Weed uh, chose this area for his lumber mill, and he the, it had constant wind, and he he knew that the wind would help dry his lumber. Well, now here we are, 100 and, uh, you know 15 years later, and uh, the the timber industry, the lumber industry has slowed down because of the housing slowdown, but the wind is still constant. It'll always be here. And so I, I looked on Google Earth. Uh, I scoured Google Earth maps uh, uh, for all the little hilltops uh, between Weed and Wairika, uh, trying to find the perfect hill to uh, put a little small wind farm. You know, I wanted to find one close to a road, something that had some uh, connectivity as far as electricity and maybe a nice ridge line that would run east and west because our prevailing wind comes from the south here. And then all of a sudden, this property just appeared with a sign one day for sale, 
and it was perfect. It was 40 acres. It had a big 180-foot high uh, hill in the middle that, with a long ridge that ran east and west. Right next door is a high-voltage uh, electrical substation we can hook up wind turbines and solar panels to. Uh, it overlooks the town of Weed and the Eddies Mountains and a spectacular view of uh, Mount Shasta. And so I thought, oh, I found the place for my wind farm. But uh, uh, after purchasing it, I was uh, looking closer on uh, Google Earth, and I noticed that the back corner of the property, which is heavily forested, was a natural amphitheater. It had a natural bowl shape. And uh, so I, we had a road pushed in there, and lo and behold, it was gorgeous. Gigantic uh, cedar trees, pine trees. It's got oaks. It's got a place from the stage where the stage, the musicians can see the mountain, the crowd can see mm. the mountain, and uh, so I just said, well, let's let's do this. You know, I had visited up in Oregon, Southern Oregon. They have a place called the Brit, uh, where they have concerts all, all summer long, about forty concerts a year, and uh, it's nice, but it's it's seven miles off of I five. Parking is extremely difficult. It's in the middle of a neighborhood. Um, and we've got so many more advantages as far as the trees, the views, the access to I-5. Um, mm-hmm. So, so we're, I'm, I'm looking for partners, people who are like-minded, who would want to get involved in a, a solar and wind-powered uh, green amphitheater. You know, I want to do construction with hempcrete, use hemp bioplastics for uh, seeding. Uh, and uh, this is it's just it's going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous park. And after all, what, what band wouldn't want to play? in a place called the Weed Amphitheater anyway, you know. Absolutely, Bands being, yeah. Bands being what they are. Mm-hmm. So in the summer of 2014, almost half of the town of Weed, I think over 150 homes actually burnt down. One of the mills burnt down. I mean, there was a lot of damage. And so the town of Weed is actually experiencing a pretty low point right now, economically, as far as jobs, as far as resources and Things seem pretty tough for the town. What do you foresee happening in the town of Weed in the next coming years, you know, after they've they've been educated about industrial hemp for food, shelter, and clothing? How do you see the town of Weed, you know, prospering? What what do you foresee happening to Weed as a result of this hemp theater and, and educating them about what's going on? Well, that was the Bowles Creek fire back on September fifteenth, and that was tragic. It it was really windy, it came out of nowhere. People didn't even have time to get anything out of their houses. We lost, like you said, 150 homes. Uh, the, li- the library in town burned down, um, a couple churches, a community center. And uh, the town's economy was in tatters before that. Even before the fire, uh, half of the uh, storefronts in d- downtown Weed, these are old historic, old Western-style storefronts that were built in the early uh, 1900s, they were empty. You know, they, we got nice brick sidewalks, old-timey street lamps, but, but they all run past these empty storefronts. And um, the economy, we had the highest unemployment in the county, uh, and it's uh, the economy was – I've been trying to push, you know, a hemp-centric economy on the town, you know, for the last couple of years. And then we had the fire, and then things have gotten even worse. People have pulled together, but we still have to develop an economic plan and, and bring tourists into town, tourism money, uh, local businesses. Uh, a real sad thing is when when the kids in school today graduate from high school in Weed and they or they graduate from College of the Siskiyous here in Weed, they leave town. There's no opportunities, nothing for them here. So I'm hoping we can, between the amphitheater, running shows all summer, and hiring people, uh, if we can get the town to embrace the name Weed California and not run from it, uh, we can get a, a, a medical marijuana dispensary. We can get a hemp's product store. Uh, right now, the Weed Bakery is vacant and available. That could be used for making edibles. Uh, you know, I foresee a time when anchored by the dispensary and and surrounded by uh, hemp centric, hemp friendly businesses, we could add more small restaurants. We could add galleries and and the center of town could become a real cultural hot spot with with, for food for music for art and all kind of based around uh all the many benefits uh of cannabis and hemp and uh it's you know it's it's not like we're asking the town to embrace castor oil or drink castor oil or walk on broken shards of glass it's about you know (laughs) cannabis which is healthy which is fun which is colorful 
And uh, mm-hmm. we, we can all have fun and have a great peaceful time and everybody make money and have jobs if they just open their hearts and their minds and, uh, and get a little education as far as uh, learning about the benefits uh, of cannabis and the benefits of industrial hemp. So that's, that's so kind of my you, job. Absolutely. And, and on that note, what do you feel will be some of the key ways that we, you know, you and myself and, and our friends up here in Northern California that go to these city council meetings and that are in front of these, you know, council members and, and business owners, what do you feel are some of the key ways that we can inspire and encourage the town to shift their thinking and their attitude about industrial hemp and medical cannabis? Well, the the, the, the people on the on the council, they're 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 good guys, and and, and we have a new like, councilwoman in Wheat, and and they're they're really good people. They care, they love their town. They just they they feel that they have to uh, represent the views of their constituents, and unfortunately, uh, their 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 some of their constituents' views on cannabis, they don't know the difference between industrial hemp and and marijuana. Uh, they they think that uh, you'll get stoned, you know, from growing industrial hemp or wearing hemp clothes. In fact, I had a recent discussion with the president of COS, a College of the Siskiyous, and I suggested that the college start a uh, a class or a program for uh, for students on industrial hemp because this past year, the federal government said that uh, states where it was legal, uh, uh, which is California. Uh, could go ahead and, and the colleges could have uh, experimental programs for industrial hemp. They can uh, work on with seed strains. They can work with how mm-hmm. to produce it and how to manufacture it. And mm-hmm. I, I suggested this as a way to increase enrollment at COS. And the president kind of chuckled. He says, oh, we have a pretty conservative board of trustees. I don't think they'd ever go for something like that. Well, I thought uh, the board of trustees for a college, if they don't know the difference between industrial hemp and marijuana, they have no business, you know, running people's educations. I mean, this is something they should be excited about. The government has cleared the path for them, and uh, they're, they're not you know, they're not following through. So if you can let the college know that you want a, a, a course there, you'd be interested in, in taking a course with industrial hemp. If you come to the council meetings, stand up and speak. They listen to everybody's opinions. If you have a story, personal story or an anecdote of a, about a loved one, who uses uh, medical cannabis for their uh, pain or a uh, disease, share this knowledge with them because they do listen at these meetings. Uh, and uh, we, right now we have their ear. I was just going to say, you know, if, if you're thinking about opening a business that would be benefited by having a, a medical marijuana dispensary in town and you maybe would like to open a little restaurant nearby or you'd like to open a uh, a, a, a business that uh, sells growing supplies, lamps, soils, things like that, but you won't do it unless there's a the, the dispensary in town, let them know. If, if they think that they can get more jobs and business for town and we have enough people show up, they will change their minds. Yeah, it's just, I have two comments on what you just shared. The first thing, you know, you said, Um, that these council members, they do listen and they do want to do their best. And I get that feeling when I go to these uh, city council meetings that they do want to represent their constituents. They want to listen to the people and they want to do what the people are requesting of them or voting them to do. And so it sounds like me not only sounds like to me, not only do we want to educate the council members, but it sounds like we've got some work to do as far as educating the, the community, educating their constituents, because if their constituents understand the difference, then we wouldn't even really have to educate the council members. They're just going to hear what the people are wanting. Exactly. So that was my well, we, first comment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and what was your second? And, and then the second one is, you know, what my response to the, to the president of um, Siskiyou, Cal- the College of Siskiyou, I would just say, you know, That's exactly why we should have a a hemp class, because you have so many conservatives on the on the trustee board and and that this is one of the most conservative uh, economic boosting, um, you know, local economy building conservative things that you could do for this town. Look at Thomas Jefferson. Look at George Washington. Look at Benjamin Franklin. All hemp entrepreneurs all founding fathers of this country. And if you want to be anything in following in their footsteps 
in representing this nation, you will let your students start being educated about how to build sustainable homes, about how to build eco-friendly, non-toxic binders, sealers, plastics. You're going to get them access to hemp ropes and hemp yarn and hemp fabrics. You're going to let them know about, you know, all these benefits and, and not even not even have to touch upon medical cannabis. You could you could completely let go of the idea of medical cannabis, integrate a completely industrial hemp course into your college and have it be completely in alignment with the values of these conservatives. Yep. And in the days of our founding fathers, it was required by law that farmers had to plant hemp. And now, and now it's required by law that you can't grow hemp, although that's changing really quickly. Even conservative states like Kentucky, Indiana, they're, they're all uh, clamoring and legalizing industrial hemp for farming because, uh, you know, if, if you can grow corn or cotton, you can uh, make 60 70 a $100 maybe net profit per acre, and you can do two to three times that, at least even more so, uh, with hemp. Uh, some farmers in Canada have been making over a thousand dollars an acre when they grow hemp, not only just for the, uh, the the fiber in the stock, but also for the seeds, for oil, and for food. Uh, everything in the plant is usable. You can use all all of the plant. It's it's one of the most amazing um, plants. It, it is the most amazing plant ever put on this planet, and it's put here for a reason. It's, it's put here for us to use. And there are so many uses, it boggles the mind, and they find more every day. It's the kids in school, the college kids, who think outside the box, who will really discover more things to do with it. They'll, they'll find more ways. Uh, for example, uh, for electricity, uh, supercapacitors are the new battery that will be powering our computers and uh, phones and cars. And they, mm -hmm. you can use hemp instead of expensive graphene. Uh, mm -hmm. for for supercapacitors, and it's 1,000 times cheaper, 1,000 times cheaper than graphene and just as effective or more so. So it's we, we need to have it in the education system and not have bureaucrats saying, oh, we can't study that. It's about marijuana. Guys, wake mm -hmm. up. It's, I, I have mm -hmm. Life's too short to wait around for stupid people. You know, I'm just mm – -hmm. we got to go ahead and push on this, you know. Exactly, and so that's why people like yourself, people like – myself and Mark Juarez and, uh, you know, people that are in this town looking to make a difference, looking to leave a legacy for the next seven generations. I mean, it's true that we, California, could be an exemplary city for the entire world, for the entire rest of the world. They, like you said, have a branding opportunity to not only literally boost their entire economy, provide more jobs for people. As you mentioned, the timber and lumber industry has gone way down due to the, the housing you know, crash. And now we have these huge lumber mills that are just sitting in Weed, California. We've got acres and acres of land that could easily grow cannabis hemp for industrial purposes. You know, not only farmers could have, you know, jobs that are going to uh, get them higher profits, less pesticides, you know, no herbicides, no fungicides. They're not polluting the environment. They're, they're adding to their local economy. They're bringing a, a, a local economy to the United States so we're no longer dependent on foreign oil or foreign resources for our materials. And not, not only that, you know, the farmers, but also the processing plants. These lumber mills can start processing the hemp. They can start making biocomposites. They can start making hemp adobe, hemp crete, hemp bricks, hemp herds for animals, horses. And then like you said, you know, the, the seed production, there, there could be producers in Weed, California, separating the seed from the plant, pressing it into oil for, you know, food production, for protein powders, for energy, for uh, fuel. All of these things could be and, and are what is sitting right in front of the town of Weed as an opportunity. And so, you know, let's talk about a little bit more about, you know, what what it will take in order for us to to get people involved, you know, um, in this in this movement. I know we're, we're gearing up and planning for an event in June, which is Hemp History Week. If you haven't visited HempHistoryWeek.com, check it out. Go to a Hemp History Week event in your area in June. 
or come to ours here in Northern California. We'd love for you to be a part of it. Call us today. Get involved. Uh, the number here is 805-410-4367. If you want to get a hold of Jimmy, if you have investment capital, if you want to know about how you can get involved in this amazing, sustainable economic potential you know for the hemp amphitheater and weed it's going to be a solar wind uh you know sustainable money-making opportunity jimmy what's the way that people could get a hold of you what are your websites oh, are your I've, phone I've got uh, different websites you can go to weed amphitheater.com uh you can go to uh my other website <clears throat> visit weed.com there are contact pages there and if you want to make a difference locally, uh, come to the next council meeting. It's on they're the second Thursday of every month, so it'll be Thursday, February 12th at 5.30 at the Weed City Hall. That's at the end of Main Street, right by the statue of Abner Weed there. And uh, and you'll have a chance to speak and uh, and let them know, um, bring some facts, figures, anecdotal stories about uh, cannabis or hemp or whatever's on your mind. They do listen, and you have a right to speak. This is America. So go to visitweed.com or weedamphitheater.com, and uh, you can contact me on those things. And, uh, it's, awesome. Uh, yeah, it's going to be cool. <laughs> and you have actually a, a hemp-related cannabis song, don't you? High on the Slopes oh, yeah. of Mount Shasta. High on the Slopes of Mount Shasta. Go to YouTube, type in High on the Slopes of Mount Shasta, and uh, enjoy the song. It's an original tune. And uh, right that's on. where we live, High on the Slopes of Mount well, Shasta. I want to reiterate your dedication, your commitment to this plant. You know, we really are, I feel, the voice for this plant. There's so many, you know, things happening on this planet as far as, you know, children, plants, animals that don't have a voice. And they're not able to speak out like we can in the English language or whatever language we speak. But because we have a voice and because we're connected to the center of our being, which is love, which is harmony, which is peace, which is unity, which is balance. That's where we're coming from, and that's where we're heading. And that's why we're so committed and so dedicated to empowering and hemp-educating your hemposphere because it's that important. Food, shelter, clothing, 25,000 other things. Check out hempaware.com. Visit us, blogtalkradio.com forward slash hempaware. If you have an iDevice, an iPhone, an iPad, or iTunes on your computer, you can actually go to the podcast library and you can download and listen to every hemp episode that we've done. If you have a hemp company, if you're wanting to integrate hemp into your product line, you want to learn more about hemp, get involved with our events, give us a call at 805-410-4367 and we would love to get involved with you know whatever you're doing send you resources, get you in touch with, you know, whoever it is that you need to integrate hemp into your projects. And once again, I just want to expound and expand upon this whole idea that whatever it is that you hold in your imagination, if you want a home, if you want peace on earth, if you want a successful business, if you want to be a writer, a musician, an artist, a lawyer, a doctor, no matter what it is that you want to be, you absolutely can be it. Find that thing that you're passionate about. Get excited about it. Get in touch with your unlimited potential and don't listen to anybody. Only listen to that inner voice that tells you, yes, you can do it. And remember, believe that you have already received it and it shall be given unto you. When Jimmy and, and my partner Dodie and I were standing up on that mountain up in Weed, California, looking at Mount Shasta, we looked at each other and we said, we remember when we were just standing on a dirt lot and we were envisioning that hemp adobe home. We were seeing the, the sauna and the spa and the greenhouse and we're just using our imagination powerfully, feeling the feelings as though we already have this accomplished and we're living in that space, we're living in that verbiage and that's you know where we encourage you to come from. Don't listen to other people unless they're encouraging you and supporting you in your dreams. I want to thank you, Jimmy, so much for being on the show today, and I really look forward to our future hemp episode after we get the amphitheater up so we can let people know how it's going. Thanks. Yeah, we, California, is our field of dreams. Build it, and they will come. Amen. Hallelujah. We love and appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in to Hemp Aware Radio. Tune in next time and get hemp educated. Thanks so much Aloha. again, Jimmy. Aloha. Aloha.